traders because of any coming to you from the closingprint.com on March the 6th, 2016. And this video will cover the indices weekly, they're all higher. SP 500 plus 2.67%, NASDAQ 2.2%, IWM fared the best 4.5%, and an ERX stock exchange composite up 3.62%. Weekly, the uptrend continues to unfold, though I think we're near resistance. We had a four-day advance. I'm looking for a back and fill. Uh, four days, I haven't seen that in quite some time without a fifth day being red. We're at resistance in a lot of places, so we'll cover that, and you'll see what we're looking for going into the week. NYSE and COMP are both higher with regard to tick and tick Q. So sentiment is positive, but it is overheated. Nicey, Nazi. We all saw NIMO hit plus 117 on Friday. We haven't seen that. I can't recall the last time that's actually occurred. NYHL above zero uh, several days now. Eight of the last 10 days have been above zero and green. October, we had seven of 10. So we bested that by one. CPC. We have actually, that's incorrect, we have minus 0.74, that's actually a very bearish signal. Dollar, we had a huge move to the downside, was down 0.85%, mostly on Thursday, Friday. Yen, US dollar is sideways. TLT, all of the bonds were down 5% over the last four weeks. Emerging markets, bonds were higher, and the U.S. dollar SPX bond stock ratio is still bullish and trending lower. Crude oil was higher on Friday. We had quite a performance. It was over 5% on the day. The 10E30 MA cross last week gave us a good indication that we might see higher prices. We'd expect that to come back in. Gold, we had a breakout that fizzled on Friday. All the sectors are in the red zone, so that's a caveat for the bulls and a headwind to advances in the S&P 500 and the spiders. Bukowski, all green up arrows, but he's looking for an overhead resistance as well as we. And also we'll look at some setups in the IBD 50, among others. Here is a chart of the S&P 500 ETF SPY. We have four days in a row advancing. We haven't seen that in quite some time. We came up to the 200 period moving average, the green line. We have a spinning top. What we're looking for is a three candle reversal, a red day tomorrow, if you will, having moved up to this zone where we saw support previously. Now that we have reached this level, we could overshoot. We have an overhead level right around 204.75. So that's something to consider for the bears. We do have a small put position. At 2 o'clock, the market, market's dropped, as you know. And then after hours, it tapered off to about plus 30 cents on the spies to close. So uh, we're looking for that third candle, possibly in a three-candle reversal pattern. Not looking for a lot, but one of the scenarios is a flag underneath the 200-period moving average if this strength continues like it did back here for six weeks. The other possibility is that we pull back and we have major support down here at 194. And of course the other alternative, the other scenario is that we continue to push higher. Now we probably will see that on most of the indices. The NASDAQ has actually been trailing the S&P 500. Note that we're in the red zone. All of the sectors are in the red zone except for XLU. We have nice positive momentum here on MACD histogram and tick cumulative, as we mentioned in the opening monologue, continues to push higher. Note the volume. It is a bit below average, but we saw all this buying the last four days. So keep an eye on the S&P 500. This should give us some indication on Monday which direction we're going to go. Here is the NASDAQ 100. We're currently trading inside of this volume by price band. We're just about ready to push above that. We have the 200 period moving average in this little curvy pocket. And then just above 44.51, we have another resistance level overhead where we saw support lost 
in late December and then we push lower. So we could see resistance up in this zone right here coming into this week. Note the flag and the fact that MACD just made it above zero but Stowe again is in the red zone. Number of stocks trading above its 50 period moving average are in the areas where we've seen inflection points previously. Make a note of that as we'll be watching technology especially on Monday. The Russell, we're right against this Kirby area over here at the top of same. Resistance starts to build and then we have major resistance up here at 112.20. We're at the upper Bollinger Band. One of the scenarios is a flag here as we were talking about the spiders. Uh, second scenario would be a pullback to the rising 10 EMA. Stowe is in the red zone. MACD is positive and showing positive momentum. So we'll watch for this to give us an idea of what's going to happen. We have a spinning top on Friday so we could see a three candle reversal as well. If you see a red day and up down volume is confirming on the major indices then we would anticipate a pullback to the 10 EMA initially. Last week we talked about the NYSE, the high low indicator continued to push through 50. That's a breadth indicator which basically tell you new highs are expanding when this indicator is pushing above 50. Now we're at an inflection point that we saw back in October. We have a trend line overhead. We have 200 period above that. We have this major congestion level overhead. I doubt seriously we're going to make it through there, but we could flag out, touch this upper trend line, and then possibly push higher to the 200 period moving average. That's all possible, but with the NIMO at plus 117, we're thinking with Stowe in the red zone, we're going to see a pullback possibly to the 10 EMA here as well. And this inflection point will resolve to the downside on the high-low indicator. NIMO surged tremendously this past week. We hit a level of plus 117 and we have this trend line that goes back to late May just overhead just above the 10,000 level. Uh, note back in October that strength in breath continued to taper off even though we did decide to move higher back and fill. What we anticipate is that we've hit a crescendo in the breath indicators and more than likely we'll see a pullback within the next few days. The advanced decline for all common stocks on the New York Stock Exchange, 3100 of them, continues to push higher. We're outside the upper Bollinger Band. We're looking for a move off of this upper Bollinger Band and prices to move downward as Stowe is in the red zone and MACD is pretty much at a peak. We have resistance on the New York Stock Exchange. CPC, the put call ratio, also hit a lower low and an extreme and we are looking for an inflection for this reason as well to the downside on the New York Stock Exchange whenever this indicator gets down into the red zone. Up down volume is also looking pretty interesting. Note the the lower high on Friday. This is a 30 minute chart. Note the up volume definitely was in control for the past two days and MACD has turned. So look for at least a pullback to this rising 30 MA. If this 10 EMA turns over and crosses we could see a possibility of a move lower or a flag in the best case scenario. The volatility index, VIX, right around the mid zone, we could drop further and see further complacency. If this should happen, then we could definitely see this upper trend line and an overshoot on the S&P 500. Pondering the U.S. dollar for a moment, the move made sense with regard to the move higher in crude oil since crude oil obviously is priced in U.S. dollars. We hit this upper Bollinger Band, move back through the standard deviation one bands, and now hit the 20 period moving average. You can see right here that we put a wick in. It's highly likely that we could see a bounce here back to the upper Bollinger Band as one scenario, which would affect dollar denominated crude oil products as well. The Japanese yen has actually shown some weakness over the last two weeks, but it is holding at the 20 period moving average. You can see a bear flag here with stochastic continuing to push lower. The dollar yen pair continues to move sideways. We're in this range, these lows back here at 111 
up to these highs at 114. Bollinger Bands are con constricting, so we're looking for a move in the very near future. When this breaks out, positioning on either side of this move would be quite smart. With the move lower in dollar, again, the commodity index uh, made a turn last week. Copper is moving higher. Also, look at gold. Gold tried to break out on Thursday, but did come back in on Friday. Hit the upper Bollinger Band and pushed back in. Note the volume. And MACD is below its signal line, and STO is near the red zone. Oil directly correlated to the U.S. dollar. As the dollar moved lower, obviously crude oil continues to move higher. So this is hitting a resistance zone right in here between 36 and 37. Look for that. If prices do continue to move higher and the dollar moves lower, we have another major resistance level up here at 42. STO is in the red zone and MACD is positive. Bonds showed some weakness across all U.S. durations. However, the ELD, the Winston Tree Emerging Markets Local Debt Fund, was moving higher. So that's an interesting caveat for bondholders. TLT has been off by 5% since it hit this high at 134.99 and this lower Bollinger Band on Friday. Note the buying that stepped in to push prices back up. The 10 EMA is above price action currently. Uh, we would look for a push to the upside if the indices do in fact get weak as we have Stowe turning back up and MACD is still above zero. One of the things that we look forward to each week are catalysts. One of those catalysts are the spider sectors. Now we've added IYR, IYT, and XBI to round this out into a nice 12 sector list. If you are are bearish, you want to see these indicators all above 80, which is what we see. If you're bullish, you want just the opposite, like we had back here when prices bolted higher for the past three weeks. Currently, we have a headwind if these sectors continue to turn down. Now, XLU is the only sector that is turning up. Obviously, that is a defensive as well as XLP. When we look at the XLP to XLY ratio of staples to consumer discretionary, you want this indicator to be dropping if you're bullish. Conversely, if you're bearish, you want this indicator pushing higher, which is exactly what we're seeing towards the end of the week. If we continue to see this indicator pushing higher, that would be an indication that XLP and XLU defensive sectors are starting to see more interest. Now, if you were watching our stream on Friday, we pointed out that we had this nice move in XLF, one of the sectors. We had this volume by price ban where prices hit and printed a doji on Friday. Tapering volume, MACD is above zero, but STO is in the red zone. Now, that's the case for every single sector, as we pointed out on the candle glance chart. So, if you're bullish this week, you have a headwind just by virtue of the fact of looking at sectors. Just something to keep in mind as we start this new week. Now, as Yukarowitz mentioned on his blog, and this is a quote, it'd be easy to say that the rally ends here, but strong breath, persistent investor pessimism, and the strength in other asset classes suggest that further upside ultimately lies ahead. That said, by the end of the week, the, ad the advance showed several signs of being overextended. Weakness early in the week would be normal. In fact, if equities continue with an uncorrected rally, these gains are likely to be given back in the weeks ahead. That's something from your Carl Watts's blog. You might want to check that out. You can see his address here, fat-pitch.blogspot.com. He shares quite a bit with the stream. Check him out and check out his advertisers as well. Here is the new IBD 50 list. I've taken the liberty of sorting by percent change as of late Friday. There's a few names in here that are new. You want to check those out. 
we did see quite a few of these really bolted higher on Friday when the markets moved higher as well. You can pause this and write down the names that look good. We'll certainly post some setups on the blog uh, prior to the open on Monday. But I have spent a great deal of time over the last week enhancing the features of the website. Now you note where the menu bar is here. If you're interested in the book, that's here, the strategy videos. Of course the chat room, that's something you might want to check out. The uh, blog is now right here. So you have this home page, static home page, uh, some details here about joining our trading community. This is going to be a membership site in the next few days, maybe by next weekend. We're still under construction doing some beta testing. Uh, obviously we'll be offering instant updates via the blog, the chat room, and a game plan for the week which highlights the things that we're looking at for this week. And these are some of the stocks from the IBD 50 list that you might want to check out. Play 5, GPN 6, XRS, and BNTV. Note the comments here and the buy stops, where support and resistance is, and some of the things that we're watching out for. These are some of the names that we're looking forward to going into the week but aren't quite set up at the present time. So this is a feature that we'll be offering. Look for the site to go live probably next weekend uh, once we get everything squared away. The chat room is open for free at this point so just go in follow these directions. If you're opening the chat double rectangle here grab a hold of it that'll expand the chat. So come and join us. We talk live during the trading session, talk about the trades that we're looking at and our entries and so forth. So we're very excited about going live in the very near future. This is going to be it for me for the weekend. This is Cousin Vinny coming to you live from closingprint.com. We hope you'll join us and we'll see you on the stream on Monday. I hope this helps.